Hi there, Neil Clark, Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook as Falkirk Piping and Glen Bervy Folk Duo. This lesson will demonstrate to you my preferred method of playing the burrow movement, that's B-I-R-L. And just to recap on our last lesson, what we did was the throw in D, being of course the light throw in D, and feel free to stop the video here and practice that again. I'm sure you'll be pretty keen to go on. Of all the movements uh, that we use, or the embellishments that we use, the burrow really should be the only one to cause any possible level of discomfort. You might get away with it. I'll demonstrate the burrow first. Now, we'll split that up. Uh, what you may have seen, first of all, of course, is when I complete the burrow movement, I go with the little finger, down over the low A hole, and across. That's down over the low A hole, and across, back over the low A hole, of course. As you can see there, the tip of my B finger twitches. That's after 49 years of playing that movement, and the tip of the B finger still twitches. What you may find when you first attempt the movement, is that the, possibly even the two fingers above low A want to go down with the low A finger, and they'll probably come off the hole. Please be under no illusion that this is absolutely normal. This will happen. Uh, so don't worry about that. Just keep practicing the burrow. Eventually, with practice, with practicing the correct way of playing the burrow, then this finger will no longer move off the hole. Perhaps another explanation uh, it's worth stating just now is that on cold days, the very first casualty of piping may well be the burrow. Uh, this will, if it gets cold, it will become less accurate, and if it gets really cold, it might not happen for you at all. It demands a certain amount of dexterity from this finger. There are alternatives, and I'll show you the three recognised ways of playing the burrow. The first one is the only one that I personally would consider to be the correct way. And that, of course, is... Now, the actual notes are A, low G, A, low G, and A. We go across the hole twice, but we're playing A before we start, low G as we pass over the A hole, A again as we leave the A hole, low G again as we go back over, and finally A. Always remember that the burrow starts on A. We can't start the burrow on low G. Sometimes it's separated in music and the A will be part of the note preceding the burrow, but the full burrow will always start on A. So there we have the down and across method, or the number four, or the number seven. There's other recognised ways of playing the burrow. Some people's pinkies, fingers, don't of course make that movement. It might be impossible. So we can double tap. That's A, O, G, a, O, G, A. There are some first class pipers who employ this movement. Now, if you can't bend your finger, then that makes absolute sense. However, I would say that unless you're an absolutely first class player, you cannot make the same sound as the number seven does by double tapping the burrow. So there we have the double tap. Uh, I, I don't teach it, and in fact, I've never had any of my pupils who were unable to make 
that movement there. So that's just seen two methods. The last is just down and across. And the reason I say that neither the double tap or the down and across can make the same noise as the burrow is the pinky just doesn't move at the same speed. Unless, of course, you're at the very pinnacle of piping and, 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 and you, you can probably make it sound like that. But, but for us lesser mortals, it's down and across, down and across. Now, finally, I've talked quite a lot about that, but uh, incidentally, this is uh, chapter 21 in the National Piping Centre book, lesson 14 in Robert Wallace's book, and lesson 15 in the College of Piping book. So we're only sitting on, uh, I believe, lesson 8 here, but I'm going to cover all the embellishments first. Plus, this is an option for our first tune. Uh, we can stick this in at the end. Let's actually try the thing. So we're going to try it slowly. Now that may well feel quite awkward. Please persevere. Please pause your video now and practice a basic burrow. I hope you're going all right with that. Uh, and, and that you didn't experience too much discomfort. Uh, not I say discomfort, it's not pain. It most certainly shouldn't be pain. If it's pain, then let's think about a different instrument. Uh, no pain, please. So, down and across. Down and across. But, of course, we have to be able to perform the burrow from any other note. <laughs> slow G to low A and burrow. Now I say low A and burrow, low A is part of the burrow of course, but again please make sure that you play that low A at the start. Let's have a look at that one more time. Don't be frustrated that your pinky doesn't move at the same speed as mine. Uh, it's much more difficult actually to be able to slow that burrow down. You overextend when you're demonstrating. Uh, just a quick anecdote for you, Once uh, I once saw, in 1982 in fact, I saw Angus MacDonald, Pipe Major Angus MacDonald, stand for 15 minutes in the corner of a dressing room at uh, Windsor, pa Windsor Castle and practice his burrow. And I was 17 at the time and I wondered why is this piping god standing practicing his burrow? Well, because he and lots of other players, lots of other prominent pipers, actually consider that you can tell how good a piper is purely by the standard of their burrow. Now that, of course, is up to question, but if it's good enough for uh, Pipe Major Angus, then it's certainly good enough for me. Um, so, well worth practising the burrow. Now, we came from low G. <laughs> Please pause the video now and practice the burrow from the low G note. Now, let's progress. Uh, we'll do the full bottom hand and start again on low G. Please note, when you come down or go up, indeed, to C or D, usual applies, just make sure that you bring these fingers down as one. Don't climb between the note. I think we'll just continue with this. The, high, the, the, the top hand is easier than the bottom hand, there's less movement. Now, please note there that we heard E, A burrow, F, A burrow, and not, not high A, G, half a burrow. Always make sure that you sound that A at the start of the burrow. Going up the scale again.
please pause the video now and practice moving up the scale from low G to high A and placing a burrow after each note. Having moved up the scale, there's only really one thing remains, is to complete the lesson by moving back down the scale. I hope you got on with that. It's, you've, you've only been going on the burrow for 10 or 15 minutes now, and I have no doubt whatsoever that your B finger is still being dragged towards the bottom of the chanter. Uh, please don't worry about that. Please persevere with this method of playing the burrow. And let's try coming back down the scale from high A. There's also the option to put a G grace note at the start of the burrow, and that suits particular circumstances. Please do not fall into the trap of putting a G grace note in front of every burrow. It does make the burrow sound heavier, but there is a time and a place to use it. So please observe the, the musical score you have and stick to that. Don't put a G grace note in front of every burrow. So, we've, uh, we've went up the scale with the burrow, down the scale with the burrow, and I have no doubt at all that uh, you may be expressing, uh, experiencing some uh, discomfort uh, in your hand. Your burrow actually comes from, uh, you may have noticed that the muscles in your arm will move when you play the burrow, but if you're ever that way inclined, uh, have a feel at the back of your neck. This, that's where the muscles concerned in making this relatively small, simple movement actually come from. So there's a lot of your body involved in this one simple movement. Let's have a look at what we've just done again. <laughs> Practice that, spend some time on it, and very quickly you'll be going... Now that's the G grace notes I said not to do, but it's fun. So, please stick in at your burrows, and we'll see you for lesson number 9. And I've got to decide now what it's going to be. I think we might make it the first tune which in our case will be Scots Wahey or Bruce's address.